chip. Yeah, we're scanning to see if there's a microchip in here. We have uh, found them on a few on our surrenders, and people uh, have come back to claim them. It's an animal world out there. Watch the World Animal Awareness Society channel and feel right at home. Come, sit, subscribe, and stay a while. Around the world, wherever there are dogs, there are dogs in peril. Wherever there are dogs in peril, there are always dog saviors. Follow World Animal Awareness Society cameras as we uncover heroic scenes from around the world People who can no longer stand by watching and doing nothing as innocent creatures suffer. This is The Dog Saviors. Got you, Mom. It's got you. Well, I, I don't know that, you know, I can't speak to exactly why another rescue is doing what they do, but when you look at a situation like that, um, the puppies are more vulnerable, so you want to get the puppies out of that situation, but if you don't get the, the, the breeding pair... You're not solving the, the problem hasn't been solved. You're going to be dealing with another litter and another litter and another litter. Maybe that's what you want to be doing as a, as a rescue if you're if you're using it as a leverage point to raise money. You know, if that's the case, then then your motivations are wrong. I mean, these these puppies are at risk just from the, the fact that they have parents that you know, especially a mother dog that you know is not being cared for herself and doesn't have good nutrition, you know, and medical attention. You know, so you, the next litter of puppies is at risk, and that's that's not humane. You know, if you, a lot of times it's hard to catch the mom. Now, the puppies aren't very mobile, so you can get the puppies, but you can't get the, the mama dog because, you know, she, you know, they jump fences a lot quicker than we do a lot of times. Yeah. But, um, you know, if you could get if you could get the female dog, you're doing everybody a service, especially if those puppies are really, really young because they need to be with their mom. Yeah. It's part of the whole socialization thing and by that's how they learn to be dogs. And they do that by being with their mom. And to, to separate them for no reason, that that's inhumane and it makes for puppies that, you know, are gonna grow up and not necessarily be temperamentally sound animals. Well, along those same lines in terms of again, you know, types of things that we've been noticing some rescues doing out in the field. Um, another one we see is a lot of um, homes and buildings that are like a big mouse trap. There's a lot of food being put out to draw those animals in. Is that something that should be done? Well, the thing that, to remember is those animals that are being drawn in aren't necessarily feral pack dogs or whatever you want to call them out on the street. They may be people's dogs. You know? They may be dogs that got out of a backyard and have been running loose for a couple of weeks. Question is 107 at 426 Dumfries. They may be dogs that somebody is still looking for. We're required to, to hold those dogs. Sir, can you go get one, please? Those dogs are strays. We're 107. State law says that they have to be held as strays. I think you're deep in. Is that bad? Um, two dogs, one is supposed to be down. You want to do batteries real quick? One is supposed to be skinny and down in the back.
Take the dog, or you can take the dog in the house. Either way. Okay. Kind of. You know what the plan has to be to get her back to where she needs to be. So go on and have a conversation as to what you want to do one way or the other. Okay. Okay. And then if you're gonna keep her, then she just gotta go in the house. Okay.
her son's dog. Uh -huh. But she's caring for it. He is in a wheelchair. She's going to go in and have a conversation about whether or not they're going to keep the dog or bring the dog in. I kind of want to what she needs to do. All right. The dog. So we're just going to hang out for a minute? Hang out for a minute. Yeah, right. dog can't stay how it is. Well, it sounds like she's feeding him, but just feeding him poor quality food. And probably not enough. Because he's dog, doing yeah. the, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, the other dog is better. Yeah. But he's got that head down doing yeah. that. That's not good. And what's that a sign of? That he's just not doing good. <laughs> you know, I, he, that dog needs to have something changed today before we leave. And she's a, a reasonable person who understands what's required. You know, I went through what's required to keep the dog. You know, the dog's going to have to go in the house. It's going to have to have more fat in its diet. And it's going to require a lot of small meals and all these things. And she's really... They got her hands full and making a decision about whether or not she's able to do that. You know, a lot of dogs can do okay on uh, average dog food. Pipples and, and short haired dogs, they need a higher fat content in the wintertime. And a lot of people buy certain types of dog food. Even named brands like Pedigree have low fat content in them. Some dogs would do okay on them, other dogs won't. It, it all comes down to calories. You know, the, you got to be able to have enough to burn to stay warm and, and thrive. And if you don't have enough, that's when you start burning your, your fat stores and you end up losing weight and becoming very skinny in this kind of weather really quickly, as a matter of fact. So, I mean, we always stress people to buy the highest quality food that they can afford. And first, look at the fat, fat content and make sure it's as high as you can get. If you can't get a really good quality dog food, add cooking grease to it. I mean, we've talked to our vets, and that's the easiest way to add some calories to their dog food. So we always recommend people buy puppy food, add a little bit of grease to it, extra fat from your, your table scraps, whatever it is, to give dogs that extra calories in the wintertime. You know, like one of the reasons why Eskimos need to eat so much fat Eskimos is probably one of the reasons why they need to eat so much fat to kind of... Sure. I mean, it's it's just calories that you can burn. I mean, they're out and active, and you look at Eskimos. They are quite chubby because they eat so much whale and the, the fat and the blubber, and they just get that extra little bit of insulation that helps you stay warm in the winter. Okay. We have some paperwork we want to do. You want to get on a jacket or go inside, or what do you want to do? I don't want you to... Look kind of <laughs> kind of cold out here in a t-shirt. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, you know, there might be something else going on with that dog. There might be heartworm, you know, worms. Or... How old your son? He's Okay. Okay, so you're you're the one responsible for actually caring for the dog. Yeah. So you could sign it over as your dog. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. She has license too. To you. She has the. Dog license. Yeah. It goes to you. It and his and our name. Okay, that's good enough. Well, uh, okay, it's good. All right. All right, what's her name? Uh, lady. And she was white and brown, right? White and... Brindle? Brindle. All right. Oh. You just had the cutest. This is why we were playing peekaboo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Pipple mix? Yeah. Yeah, every winter she gets like that. Let's so see. Inside, short. outside dog? She's outside mainly. Okay, uh female, she's spayed? No. How old is she? She's gotta be like two years old. Okay. Um, housebroken? I just got a bunch of questions oh. I fill out. No? You know no, because um, my son had his accident in 2010. She was just a, 
a baby and she was in the cage and we took her off of it. So. Okay. Good with kids? Yeah. Good with other dogs? Oh, yeah. Yep. Good with cats? Don't know? No. no. Not, not good with cats? Not good with cats. Okay, bitten anybody and broken the skin in the last 15 days. Okay, how long have you owned her? Two years? Well, yeah. Um, time in your possession? Two years? She hasn't been loose, running loose, or anything like that. Nobody oh, no, else has no, had no, her? No, no, no. Okay. No, that's why I went and got her shot at the thing because if I let her off the chain, she'll climb that fence. Yeah. She yep. <laughs> Sorry. She no, that's okay. It's good to know. <laughs> she can climb that gate with no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I hate to say that, but, but hey, dogs got their things, I you know. Mean, I Did don't know what it is because we have black friends, and it's very hard. Well, you, you never know why dogs have what they have in their head, you know what I mean? Um, this guy would walk by and he's got two pits, which got a hold of my mom's dog and tore it in half. Yeah. And my mom was next to the door. Yeah. And it's... Yeah. <laughs> Any, um, where did you get the dog from? A friend, pet shop, breeder? Um, he got it from a friend. Somebody gave it to him. Um, any medical problems you know of? Broken bones, parvo, just anything that's happened, anything like that that you know about? No. Okay. Saw the animal today. When was your last see the animal today? Um, when was the last time the dog was seen by a veterinarian? A what? A vet. When was the last time the dog um, got seen by a doctor? Haven't. Okay. But you saw, you got shots, right? Yep. Uh, uh, Clark Park? No, the, uh, where you get the license at? Animal control? Yeah. Okay. Do you know when that was? Um, last year. Okay. And, okay. U M F R I yes. I always have a hard time spelling history. <laughs> this is two one seven four two one seven. All right, just uh, let's see what time is it? It's about eleven. It's about twelve o'clock. I just need to have you sign ownership of the animal over to the Humane Society. Okay. And then, uh, will she let you bring her out on a leash? Yeah. All right. Too much stuff in my pocket. You just, yeah, just uh, put that around her neck there, and you can just walk her out. Okay? You don't need to hook it to her. No, oh, you can oh. just, yeah, just kind of slip <laughs> over. It gets easier to get on and off. <laughs> All right? All right.
Hey, buddy. Yeah, hey. How you doing? Hey, buddy. <laughs> How you doing, guy? There you go. That's a good boy. Oh, he's so happy to see you. Sit. Sit. Somebody drop by some straw. Okay. Because this. I have straw in the garage. Yeah. I mean, I have a bale in the garage. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's never really been pretty cold out yet to give it to him. So oh, I, would, I mean, but I, I do give it to him, though. I would start now. <laughs> we have it free at our shelter all year long. Uh -huh. You can pick it up down there on I 75 okay. in the boulevard. Right. It's free straw all year. So okay. you want to keep a lot of straw in there? Yeah, that, okay. that'd be fine. Because that's what keeps them warm. Right, I mean, because I, I, stick, I stick straw, and it was in both the dog houses. And yeah, stuff and like they that, kick so. it out. Yeah. Right, and they, they trample through it through yeah. the, uh, the like, pin and everything like that. So, I mean, I, mean, I got to fill it every every couple weeks or so. It yeah, all yeah. depends on how much they take out of it. Yeah, know, yeah. Like but, I mean, if you need more, we got plenty of it down there. You just <laughs> okay. come by, and they'll give it to you over the front counter. All right, thank okay. you. Okay? Yep. All right, come on, Papa. You okay? You okay? Come on. You okay? Hey, you okay? You okay? Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, come here. Come here. What? Nothing's getting you. Nothing is getting you. Nothing is getting you. There you go. Come on. There you go. There. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It's okay. You okay? Oh, 
Owner surrender and probably going to be a weight game. Yeah, Depending on if she's skinny enough. To see if there's a microchip in here. We have uh, found them on a few more surrenders and people uh, have to come back to claim them. Thank you. 
Dad, I hear you're recording for the World Awareness Society. What is that? Yeah, you mean World Animal Awareness Society? Well, I'm a volunteer with the World Animal Awareness Society, Emerson. I volunteer my voice for use in animal rescue videos. And I don't know if you know this, but everyone at the World Animal Awareness Society is a volunteer. But what do they do? They're award-winning volunteer filmmakers who have interacted with 2,200 animal welfare nonprofits, including Maddie's Fund and Austin Pets Alive, providing information-rich content to more than 45 countries in the last 10 years. Dad, what's that mean? Okay, um, how about this? They make short movies about animals that are in peril, that are hurting, you know, in bad shape or dying or homeless in the streets. They film rescuers doing heroic work so they can focus on saving lives. The World Animal Awareness Society posts the rescue videos on social media, and then they're broadcast on TV, sharing the heroic stories with people all over the world so they can understand what's really going on. Cool. I like animals. How did you start volunteering? Well, I met their director through social media and saw the work that they were doing and knew that I could help their cause. So I asked if I could volunteer. I am very fortunate to have really great jobs providing the voice to so many shows that I believe it's important to give back. Since I've been volunteering with the World Animal Awareness Society, they have created the seventh most influential YouTube channel for dog rescue lovers in the world, WA2S Films. That's so cool. Hey dad, nice job. Do you think I could volunteer too? You already are, Em. You already are. You're watching the World Animal Awareness Society. Yep, that'll do, Emerson. That'll do. You're watching the World Animal Awareness Society. <laughs>